So we're live on IGTV, and uh, once again, this is our CCTV update uh, with Axis Communications. And on with us today is John Phelps. Hey, John, how are you? I'm doing well, Joseph, and yourself? Not bad. All right, John, uh, take it away. Uh, you've, you've got the full screen. Okay, great. Uh, this morning, uh, I'm going to talk uh, briefly about the uh, thermal imaging, uh, the technology behind it, and uh, a couple of our products specifically, um, Axis Communications. Uh, we do have uh, two models now of, of thermal cameras, um, but one thing to probably preface the technology is that it, it's not a new technology. Uh, it's, it's been around for, for a long time. Uh, it's it's uh, it's. It's a very popular uh, technology for for detection of uh, of objects uh, at great distances. In many cases, uh, obviously, the military has been using thermal imaging for for a long, long time. Um, it's very new to the IP uh, network camera realm. Uh, we brought the first one uh, to uh, to the market uh, about six months ago, which was our 1910E model. Uh, but what makes uh, thermal imaging uh, a better solution or, or a very, very reliable solution at the very least is the fact that it just does not need light whatsoever uh, because it's using thermal radiation in, in wavelengths up to about uh, 1,400 uh, nanometers. Uh, there's absolutely no light required, whereas the best possible camera you can find that's a day-night camera will require some form of light. Uh, so in absolute darkness, uh, no matter the type of weather conditions, whether it be uh, raining, snowy, foggy, uh, smoke-filled environments, uh, anything like that, a thermal camera has no problems uh, detecting capabilities. Um, one thing to note, though, is that it's not a camera that's designed for recognition capabilities. Uh, you're not going to be able to, to recognize you know, the, the person on screen as your neighbor or your friend. Uh, you'll simply be able to identify the fact that there's a person there. Whereas, you know, a normal camera in those type of conditions, you may barely be able to make out whether it's a deer or a, or a person scaling the fence. Um, again, uh, you know, there's, there's multiple types of cameras. Uh, there's a uh, price ranging, uh, you know, from our $3,000 model up to probably three to $400,000 cameras uh, based on different uh, image sensor technologies and capabilities. Um, there's both cooled and uncooled image sensors uh, in thermal cameras. Uh, cooled would require some form of a cryogenic uh, chiller or a cooling unit, uh, which can be quite large, cumbersome, and very expensive. Uh, they will, however, give cameras much more detection capability, perhaps to uh, you know very uh, small uh, uh, degrees of temperature variation uh, and very far distances as well. Uh, and then there's the uncooled variant, which we're using in our cameras. Uh, and what those are going to allow for is uh, not quite as uh, long-range detection capabilities, or perhaps uh, not a very, uh, not as finite a, a degree of detection capability. You know, you won't be able to perhaps see somebody with a fever versus somebody not with a fever. Um, the, the, the cost difference and the maintenance aspect difference, though, does, uh, does weigh heavily into that. Uh, you know, at a $3,000 camera can do an amazing job detecting uh, de uh, people from anywhere uh, from 200 yards to even as far as 1,300 yards, depending on the model camera of ours that you were to use. Um, you know, some of the, uh, the, the great benefits of of thermal detection, as I mentioned, is that you'll be able to uh, detect objects at great distance, uh, no matter the the, uh, the background that you're fighting against, uh, whether it's a person in camouflage clothing walking through the woods, uh, you'll be able to find them very easily. Uh, you don't need any kind of a light source. Uh, another thing uh, is that the cameras, because they don't see uh, natural occurring light, uh, either an IR uh, or, or visible light, uh, they can't be blinded. Uh, if you were to, uh, you know, shine a strong headlight or a laser pointer into the lens of, the, of a thermal camera, it's not going to get blinded, whereas a standard uh, day-night camera would. Um, you know, they can be a, a great supplement to, uh, to existing systems. Uh, again, for long distances, I'm sorry, uh, somebody was tapping on the shoulder. Um, 
uh, for great distances, uh, you, you know, you'd be able to use it uh, in a very dark area uh, to trigger other cameras, so to speak, uh, to, uh, to begin recording. Uh, so they can have a lot of uh, onboard analytics. Uh, ours specifically, uh, ours again are specifically, uh, they're PoE powered, uh, which makes them uh, very, very uh, easy to uh, install and uh, to configure out in the field. Uh, and uh, ours again specifically, we have a, a very uh, open source Vapix uh, API language, uh, so it makes it very easy for third party companies to develop software for the cameras themselves. Um, but the thermal cameras, uh, due to just their inherent abilities uh, to not use light, uh, can, can be a, a huge supplement to uh, surveillance systems. Um, you know, some of the applications. Uh, depending on model camera, we have uh, two different models. We have a 1910 and a 1921 camera. Uh, the primary difference between the two uh, is uh, image sensor size as well as lens options. Uh, the 1910 has a smaller image sensor of 160 by 128 pixels, uh, which allows it to uh, detect a person at about 200 yards and a vehicle at about 600 yards, car size vehicles, about 600 yards. Whereas the 1921 has interchangeable lenses uh, and a much larger uh, image sensor, which is a 348 by 288 uh, pixel image sensor. Uh, and it can have uh, lenses from a 13 millimeter, which is the standard lens for the 1910, all the way up to a 60 millimeter telephoto lens. Uh, and at that max 60 millimeter lens can detect up to about 3,000 yards for a vehicle and about 1,300 yards uh, for a human being. Uh, so again, uh, great long distance detection capabilities. Uh, and, and again, uh, just due to their nature, uh, they can't be blinded. You can't hide from them. You can't trick them. Uh, the only true weakness uh, of, of a thermal camera itself is glass uh, a glass uh, wall, glass block, uh, a glass housing, uh, 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 lens covering, things like that, uh, because uh, thermal radiation can't penetrate glass. So, uh, you know, that really truly is is what we call the only kryptonite to a, a thermal camera. Uh, other than that, you know, snow, rain, sleet, doesn't matter. Um, application areas that we see for ours and and in others other than military applications are you know ports and marinas uh, where you're trying to get detection capabilities but it's just not possible to add enough light for day night cameras or even infrared light uh, without an object uh, that is reflective to infrared uh, illuminators will do no good for you you could shine them onto a port area flood the area with infrared light but if there's nothing to reflect you're just not going to get any uh, visible uh, information out of that type of a camera. Uh, whereas with a thermal camera, uh, a buoy in the middle of the ocean, uh, you know, 500 yards off, will will ind be indicated and detected with a thermal camera because there is a temperature difference. Um, anything over absolute zero uh, degrees uh, does emit thermal radiation. Uh, as funny as it sounds, an ice cube is, does have heat to it, so it, uh, it will be detectable with a thermal camera. Uh, we see uh, utilities, power plants, even prisons uh, uh, using applications uh, for thermal cameras uh, for perimeter detection, area protection. Uh, we see uh, power plants using them to uh, indicate uh, whether a generator is operating within normal temperatures or if bearings are starting to heat up and, and uh, get red hot, so to speak, uh, you know, because of the abilities of the camera to detect that type of a temperature variation. Uh, regular general surveillance applications, uh, parking lots, schools and campuses, uh, uh, again, high security areas like prisons and prison yards, loading dock areas, things like that all have uh, the ability to uh, make use of a thermal camera in a much better way than, than day-night cameras because you don't have to add light, uh, which becomes a truly covert uh, method of surveillance. Uh, even in a, a, a night camera, a, a day-night camera using infrared, uh, if you're not using uh, completely covert uh, infrared illumination, there's a faint red glow which can be detectable and then uh, people are under under the impression that they're being recorded or at least being watched or surveilled. Uh, so there's quite a, quite a few uh, benefits to using thermal uh, cameras. Uh, they, uh, they do offer a, a great advantage 
both uh, day-night cameras uh, in long-distance shots, as well as uh, areas where you simply can't add light, you know, long uh, in ports, marinas, things like that that I've mentioned. Thank you. Um, thank you, thank oh, you John. Sure. Um, I certainly do appreciate uh, this month's 